catching story that we've been talking about as well. The money is gone, Jason, forever. 25 investigates exposing a check scam that can wipe out your bank account. Investigative reporter Ted Daniel explains how it works and how to steer clear of it. When a check is deposited, banks are required to post the money to your account quickly. Typically, the money hits before the check actually clears. We found scammers are taking advantage of that timeline to steal your cash, and banks don't have to get that money back for you. We first met Andre Cacciatorian from Southie this spring. It was a mother of, of, a, of a child. Um, that's what the scammer was posing to be. It, seemed, it was a simple job. Andre is a photographer and editor. He says he was contacted by a woman who wanted him to edit a music video for her daughter. She sent him all the files and he got the job done. The bill was for $300, but the woman sent Andre a check for a lot more than that. And then she apologizes and says, oh, I'm so sorry, I sent you 3000 Can you send me the difference back? Andre deposited the $3,000 check. After the funds posted to his account, he electronically transferred the $2,700 overpayment back to the woman. Then this happened. The check she sent me bounced. So that's when I realized, oh, I've been scammed. It didn't make sense to Andre. How does a check bounce after it's posted to his account? Several viewers have asked 25 investigates to look into that question after they were taken in similar scams. So we went to the Federal Trade Commission for answers. By law, banks have to make deposited funds available quickly, usually within two days. And so the check may clear. But later, once it's all untangled that this was a scam, the bank will tell you that that was not a legitimate check. And then um, they will expect the consumer to hold the bag. There's a common denominator in these types of scams, something John Brayle from the National Consumers League says consumers should look out for. If someone you don't know or trust sends you a check and then asks for money back, it's likely fraud. Are there ways to spot a fraudulent check or a fake check? Unfortunately, it's incredibly difficult to spot a fake check. The best thing to do is if you get a check like these um, is if you deposit it, wait at least a week, maybe two weeks before you do anything with that money. And somebody who wants you to do it before that time is just trying to scam you. In addition, be wary of strangers who overpay for an item or service. Be careful wiring money to strangers. Immediately report check scams to your bank, police, and the Federal Trade Commission. Another mistake I feel like I made was I should have, you know, checked the address from the check um, that was coming because when I typed it, it's like a, a widespread scandal. It was a hard lesson for Andre to learn and a costly one. Months later, he says Bank of America closed his case and he never got his money back. The FTC says fake check scams disproportionately harm young adults, especially people in their 20s. The National Consumers League is urging Congress to provide more protection to victims of this scam. A multi-county check cooking scheme is in jail tonight. 23 year old Keeley Watkins faces felony charges related to an altered check that belonged to a Temple Terrace woman. Eight on your side, consumer investigator Shannon Bankin first told you about this stolen check in February and then discovered this story has many layers. And she's back tonight. Shannon. Jane Keith, this started with one altered check cashed by one woman. For seven weeks, I have followed public records that led to something much bigger. And now the Pinellas County Sheriff's Office has made one arrest in connection with the first forged check that I discovered. This is the Keeley I've been telling you about since February. Tonight, Keeley Jaden Watkins is in the Pinellas County Jail on charges related to altering and cashing Phyllis Faber's stolen check back in January. I am more than overjoyed. I really thought it was going to take a lot longer than it did. And mostly, I want to see consequences for actions because in our society today, I feel like it's slipping the wrong way. Phyllis, a salon owner, paid a bill by check for pool services to a pinch a penny. It was altered and cashed, changing the one. $170 into $970. When Phyllis called me, Temple Terrace Police had closed their case, even though they said they had Keeley on video cashing the check. That's because the bank is out of their jurisdiction in Pinellas County. It was weeks after my story aired that the Temple Terrace PD referred the case to the sheriff's office. And now, seven weeks after my first story about the check that was stolen a month before that, 
Keeley has been arrested, charged with grand theft, forging a check, and fraudulent use of personal identification. It's a felony. I mean, this is huge, and she affected an awful lot of people. My investigation into Phyllis's stolen check led to more stories revolving around Keeley, including my discovery that the Largo Police Department seized Keeley's car in January, packed with hundreds of personal documents belonging to individuals and businesses, check paper, a printer, a metal grinder, IDs, bank cards, and checks. She put Keely Jordan Watkins. And now Janice Taylor of Tampa has stepped forward to say she's a victim too. Her check to the same pinch of penny was stolen, altered, and cashed, also adding a nine to the amount. Also cashed in the name of Keely Jaden Watkins. I could see that it must have been somebody who was a professional because of how they fixed my check, how they changed it. Uh, you can tell they'd done it before. Hey, talk to you, sir. Yes, sir. Come me. Don't do this, sir. Don't do this, sir. Don't, don't, don't do this. You need to stop. You need to stop. I'm telling you right now. Federal lady, head up Beachwood Highway. Twenty nine. Sir, stop moving. Stop moving now. Stop. Do not. I'm not moving no more. That's fine. I'm not trying to hurt you, sir. But thousand dollars in forged checks deposited at Comerica Bank locations all over our area. Police have some pretty good pictures of the suspect and they need your help. If you know him, you would recognize him from these pictures. No doubt about it. He might not be the best at disguising himself, but no amateur when it comes to forging checks. This guy, yeah. this dude right here, deposited five fraudulent checks into five different accounts into five different ATMs. Gross Point City Police still stumped on where their suspect is getting the checks in the first place to recreate the fake ones, but they look real down to the signatures. Stealing checks and then they're, they're recreating them online digitally, making out a new payee and a new amount and then they deposit them into an account. Detective Mike Narduzzi says this guy's MO is to hit Comerica Bank ATMs in Gross Point City, Dearborn Heights, Southfield, and Detroit late at night. Then he gets as much out of the ATM before the bank catches on. Our check alone, he deposited a $23,000, $24,000 check, and he got about $5,000 out before the banks caught that it was that it was uh, fraudulent. He's allegedly stealing debit cards, then forging the checks to match those names. The check that was deposited into the ATM here in Gross Point City was from a property management company in Minneapolis, Minnesota. He's got a buddy too, kind of a getaway driver in this white Dodge Charger with distinct front end damage and a black front quarter panel on the passenger side. Detective Narduzzi says he won't stop on his own. A major theft from a mail facility at JFK airport. Two postal workers have now been arrested and they're accused of stealing treasury checks, maybe worth even as much as $40 million. News Force Gus Rosendale joining us from the newsroom tonight with what else we've learned, Gus? Well, Natalie, detectives with the NYPD tell us they were initially tipped off by a bank that red flagged suspicious deposits and they end up joining forces with federal authorities and that joint effort led to arrests earlier today. What are you guys doing? What happened? Tonight, these suspects are accused of conspiring to steal more than 100 checks worth millions of dollars from the JFK mail facility. We uncovered really a point of compromise, and that point of compromise was JFK uh, post office. Prosecutors believe it's the biggest theft at JFK since the famous Lufthansa heist in 1978, when about $6 million in cash and jewelry was stolen from the airport. United States Attorney for the Eastern District of New York, Breon Peace, said in a statement, criminals who cash in on checks stolen from the mail can expect to fill out change of address forms for the federal prison they will be calling home. Two of the defendants, prosecutors say, worked for the Postal Service. Three others are charged with endorsing and depositing what investigators describe as stolen checks issued by the U.S. Treasury, mainly heading to international destinations. These are checks that people are waiting for. These are checks that people are awaiting for their livelihood. New at 6, we've learned that included Social Security benefits, COVID stimulus checks, and tax refunds.
Indictments charge at least $4 million was stolen. However, NYPD detectives think a lot more was taken. When we look at ledgers that have been recovered and phone records and the like, we, we, uh, our, our investigative theory is that over $40 million has been fraudulently either obtained or affected. So it's a big number. A team of local and federal law enforcement has been working on the case for the past year and a half. These are individuals working at the post office that we entrust. We give really a sacred trust to, right? You know, so, you know, to deliver everything with integrity. It is our calling these suspects dangerous. They say one had a loaded gun nearby when he was taken into custody. It's of checks stolen from the mail at a local post office, and it turns out it was an inside job. This afternoon, we now know the post office supervisor at the center of the crime spree will be going to prison. Senior investigative reporter Bob Siegel was in federal court and explains how long the postal worker will spend behind bars. As James Lancaster climbed the stairs to the federal courthouse in downtown Indianapolis, he was hoping a judge would offer leniency for a crime that crippled businesses on the northwest side of Indianapolis. Two years ago, while Lancaster was the customer service manager at the New Augusta Post Office, he started taking checks right out of the mail. Court records show he stole at least 272 checks worth at least $1.7 million from 59 different businesses. Hospitals, utilities, car dealerships, a cancer research center, charities, and other local businesses all suffered significant damage when their checks were stolen from the post office and sold online. The owner of Fine Promotion says his business was impacted for months. It's hard for anyone to understand what the business interruption is like to shut down your checking account. And plus, we had to change how we were doing business because we could no longer trust the post office. After 13 investigates reported on the rash of stolen and altered checks, federal investigators quickly focused on Lancaster, who admitted taking the checks and providing them to two accomplices in Illinois. Lancaster pled guilty to mail theft and conspiracy to commit bank fraud. Wednesday morning at his sentencing hearing, Lancaster cried as he told a federal judge, I want everyone to know I am truly sorry for everything that's happened. I am embarrassed and ashamed of my own actions. His attorney asked the court to not send Lancaster to prison. The judge did not agree. Judge Tanya Walton-Pratt said Mr. Lancaster was in a position of trust at a busy post office, but showed nothing other than greed and disregard of the victims. She told the former postal worker, it's important that individual victims see justice was served in this case. The judge sentenced Lancaster to serve 40 months behind bars. Oh my gosh, that sh it should be at least twice that. Rob Fine believes that penalty is much too lenient. What he knew what he was doing and he did it, he did it 200 times, for God's sakes. Lancaster will begin serving his sentence within the next several months. He did not want to talk with 13 News after his court hearing, but he did tell me again he's sorry for his crime and that stealing the checks was, in his words, a big mistake. U.S. Attorney Zach Myers sees it differently. Stealing almost 250 checks from the mail to the tune of almost $2 million, that's not a mistake. That is a series of repeated choices, a persistent pattern of felonious criminal behavior that the defendant chose to engage in every time he stole yet another check. So, you know, I don't think that any argument that this was simply a mistake, you know, has any validity. This case may be over, but the impact on the U.S. Post Office will likely last much longer. Nelson County detectives break up a bogus check scheme and put two people behind bars. Investigators believe the man behind this scheme has likely been doing it across the country for years. WOKY's Lauren Adams explains how this crime spree came to an end in Nelson County. Investigators say it was the victim that first noticed something might be wrong after that check wouldn't clear. And that was all the way back in November. It's fictitious. It's forged. And that check was written for over $33,000. Detective Brandon Teeter with the Nelson County Sheriff's Office tells us Zachary McDonald had been taking advantage of people for years. When he was arrested in Bourbon County, investigators say he was there scamming someone else. I talked with individuals all the way from Texas uh, concerning this case. 
Investigators say McDonald was producing fake cash, you see it here, and checks with the help of his girlfriend, Catherine Silliman, and two others, Caitlin Hicks and John Quinn. Police say they used one of those fake checks to purchase two trucks and some equipment from an online auction in Nelson County. By the time the bank processed that $33,000 fake check, investigators say McDonald was long gone. It's frustrating when you, you know, work real hard and, you know, have a successful auction and get threw up in the face, you know, because somebody, you know, cheated you out of, you know, several thousand dollars. But, hey, it could have been more. Stephen Bunch says the Nelson County family that hired him for the auction actually helped track down some of the items online. But he's not expecting to get this truck or welder back. And that's a loss of $25,000. But now, thanks to months of investigating, Detective Teeter says McDonald and his girlfriend are behind bars, so they can't scam anyone else. It's unfortunate that you've got good, hardworking citizens out here that go and, and try to, to make an honest living, and then you have these individuals who go out there and take advantage of them. As the investigation continues, more charges are expected, including in other states.